Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. The Tale of Nur al-Din and His Son. Once upon a time in Egypt, there was a grand vizier who had two bright sons, Shams al-Din Muhammad and Nur al-Din Ali I.A. Upon the grand vizier's death, the sultan appointed both sons as viziers, with each taking turns to assist the sultan. While one accompanied the sultan on journeys, the other handled the country's matters. One day, the elder brother, Shams al-Din, suggested that they should both marry on the same day, and, if he had a daughter while Nur al-Din had a son born on the same day, they should marry their children to each other to continue their family line. Nur al-Din asked what dowry Shams al-Din would want for for his daughter. Shams al-Din responded that he would require 3,000 gold coins, three gardens, and three farms. Nur al-Din found this unfair, believing his son, who would carry on the family name, deserved better. Their disagreement led to a heated argument, and they parted on bad terms. Shams al-Din accompanied the Sultan on a journey to another city, while Nur al-Din packed his belongings and set off on his own journey. He rode his beautiful mule and eventually arrived in Basra. The Grand Vizier of Basra, impressed by Nur al-Din's mule, invited him to his home. After hearing Nur al-Din's story, the Grand Vizier adopted him, married him to his daughter, and brought him to the Sultan, who granted him an office in the Sultanate. Meanwhile, after a month, Shams al-Din returned home and, upon learning from the servants that his brother had left, felt remorse for their argument. He sent people to search for Nur al-Din, but to no avail. Eventually, he married a beautiful merchant's daughter. Both brothers married on the same day, and their wives conceived on the same day as well. Shams al-Din had a daughter, while Nur al-Din had a son whom he named Badr al-Din Hassan. Badr al-Din was so lovely and beautiful that Nur al-Din often brought him to the Sultan, who adored the child. Years passed, and Nur al-Din fell ill. On his deathbed, he told his son about his brother and their argument, expressing his regret and longing to reconcile. He gave Badr al-Din a handwritten letter to prove his identity to his uncle. After Nur al-Din's death, Badr al-Din mourned deeply and refused to leave the house for a month. The Sultan, angered by his absence, ordered the seizure of his property and his arrest. A kind servant warned Badr al-Din, who fled to his father's grave. At the grave, a merchant who had business with Nur al-Din offered to buy his father's ship for a thousand gold coins and gave him the money. As Badr al-Din slept at the grave, a female genie saw his beauty and called her brother to see him. Her brother agreed he was handsome, but mentioned a girl who resembled him but was even more beautiful. She was the daughter of a grand vizier in Cairo, whose father had refused the Sultan's marriage proposal claiming a promise to marry her to his long-lost brother's son. The Sultan, enraged, had forced her to marry the lowliest of his servants, a hunchbacked groom. The genies decided to bring Badr al-Din to Cairo to compare their beauty. Through their magic, Badr al-Din replaced the hunchback groom and spent the night with his cousin, who conceived by him. By dawn, the genies returned him to Basra, leaving behind his clothes, money, and the letter, and accidentally placing him at the gates of Damascus. Bader al-Din, confused, told people about his strange journey, but they thought him mad. A kind cook took him in, adopted him, and taught him to cook. Meanwhile, Bader al-Din's cousin told her father what had happened and he discovered the items Badr al-Din had left behind. Realizing his nephew was the groom, he informed the Sultan, who forgave everyone. 
The following year, Ba'er al-Din's cousin gave birth to a son, Ajib. Shams al-Din adopted Ajib as his own son while awaiting his nephew's return. Ten years later, with no news of Badr al-Din, Shams al-Din sought the Sultan's permission to travel with his daughter and grandson to Basra to find him. The Sultan granted permission and provided letters of introduction. During their journey, they passed through Damascus, where Ajib and his eunuch visited the cook's shop. Badr al-Din, now running the shop, felt an affection for Ajib and invited them in for pomegranate grains with sugar. Despite initial hesitation, they accepted. Ajib and the eunuch returned to their camp. Badr al-Din tried to follow them. But Ajib grew afraid and threw stone at Badr al-Din, injuring him. So he left them alone. Then their entourage continued on to Basra, where Shams al-Din inquired about his nephew. The Sultan informed him that his nephew was missing, but his mother was still alive. They met Badr al-Din's mother and took her back to Cairo, hoping to reunite the family. On the return journey, they again stopped in Damascus. Ajib insisted on visiting the cook because he felt guilty throwing stones at him. The cook once more served them the pomegranate dish, and they ate until they were full. When they went back to their camp, Ajib's grandmother cooked him the exact sum dishes. When Ajib refused his grandmother's version of the dish, he told her he just ate the same food that tasted more delicious. She assured him that in the whole world, she and her son are the only one who can prepare this dish. She then sent the eunuch to fetch a sample from the cook's shop. Tasting it, she recognized her son's cooking. Shams al-Din summoned the cook by the help of the Sultan of the city and pretended to punish him and blindfolded him. They all went back to Cairo and they brought him along. They recreated the wedding night and Badr al-Din remembered everything, proving his identity. The family reunited joyfully. Shams al-Din took Bader al-Din to the Sultan, who, impressed by his intelligence, gave him an office in the Sultanate. When the Sultan heard the story told by the Grand Vizier, he admitted that the story was truly marvelous. So he decided to forgive the Grand Vizier's servant, and he gave both the young man who wrongly killed his wife and her father a stipend each month to better their lives. Shasherazad then started telling another story.